Hi, we are still continuing on the journey of analyzing the past 10 years of the GCEO level chemistry practical. Now, as I mentioned before, there are six to eight steps or processes that you will be doing during the entire practical. So, of course, I mentioned also in the previous video about the importance of heating a solid. So today, I'm going to bring you to the first two steps. So watch and learn. Now remember, check out our bio because we have very good physics content and geography content and primary school math and sciences as well. So check it out, okay? Well, we did an analysis of the last 10 years of the GCEO level chemistry practical. And I told you that out of the 10 years, we found that eight years you're asked to find out the unknown. Two years, you're given the known. And out of the eight years of the unknown, six years, you're given a solid. And from the previous video, I focus on the solid and one of the processes that you often use is to heat it. And of course, I also mentioned that for both of them, something common happened is that we notice there are six to eight tests or processes that you're given. So today, I'm going to help you unpack the first two. Like we mentioned, there are a total of perhaps six to eight tests or steps that you can do for the entire paper, six to eight. And we started off by explaining that most of the time you're given a solid and the first processes with a solid often is to heat the solid. When you're tasked to heat the solid, very often gas, gases are evolved and in that, in that instruction of heating the solid, they will tell you in specific what are some of the gases to test for. And if you test the gas correctly, well, or the, if there are evidence of some gases, they will actually give you a clue to what is the solid, which I already mentioned in the previous video. Now, even if there is no gas evolved, do not fret because I even give you some steps or uh, some steps to what to write down for the observation. So remember to watch the video. Now, Beside heating, sometimes they may even ask you to add, an, uh, add water, H2O. Alright, so when they add water, the main job is to dissolve it to formulate a solution. Now how about the, the, the solid that you're heated then? Well, the next step most of the time, your task to add an acid. Well, when you add an acid, many a time, you might even see some gases evolve. The gases can be in an effervescent form. That means you will see bubble. E-F-F-E-R-V-E-S-C-E-N-C-E. -E -E. Now, I will conclude, or I should say that I will minimize it to two possibilities. Carbon dioxide, CO2. Another gas will be H2. Now, some of you will be wondering, oh, Ms. Alina, how come you know definitely is carbon dioxide or hydrogen gas? Well, I concluded this according to the syllabus. In your acid, base, and salt topic, the chemical reaction of acid that will give out gases are two. Acid react with a carbonate, will give out carbon dioxide, or when acid react with metal. So, after you add an acid and you saw effervescence, ah, you know what are the two tests to test. Then some of you will be saying, but Miss Selena, most of the time in practical, we have no time. Okay, but we saw effervescence, but by the time we, we take out all the apparatus, the, the effervescence is gone. So, what is the most uh, valuable test to do? Well, if you only have time to do one, why not prepare lime water test for carbon dioxide? Because we all know, Acid can react with a metal carbonate to give out carbon dioxide, and acid can react with all metal carbonate. But in order for acid to react with a metal to give out hydrogen gas, you know that this metal need to be of a higher reactivity series. In the in the position of the reactive series of metal, this metal must be of a higher position because the acid that's given here is diluted. So this chance or the chance of hydrogen coming out is slightly slimmer. So I will go on to test for carbon dioxide instead. Okay, now one of the steps when you add acid, they will always say make sure that the solid is completely dissolved. 
Why is that so? Because they want you to form a solution. Yes, the solution will have colors most of the time. Sometimes you might see them in blue color, so you call it blue solution. Sometimes you might see it in green, this green. Sometimes you might see it in a reddish brown solution. Or even a pale uh, yellow solution. Lastly, everything might dissolve giving you a colorless solution. Whatever it is, once you see it, write down the color. Now then you will say that, oh, yay, after I get the color, I will know which, uh, which is the, which is what is inside the solid already, yay. No, because these only tell you the color, they are not conclusive, but yet having the solution is so vital, is so important because the subsequent tests, which I left with four to six tests, will guide us to help us to find out what is exactly inside the solid. So having the solution is important. So make sure that you, you dissolve the solid completely. Make sure that when you add acid, the solid dissolves completely. And when you obtain the solution, it is for you a next step to go on to find out the cation and the anion. So remember, this is important to write it down. Okay, so I'll see you back for more videos. Hi, thank you for sitting through the entire video and I hope that the video has benefited you and you have learned a lot. So don't forget to click like if you like the video and subscribe to our channel and check out our bio because we have created a lot of good content, physics content and also geography content. So check out our Project Lightbot video. See you back for more.